Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the class. And we're going to do something, again, a little bit different today. And what we're going to look at is how books can become theatre. How you stage stories. Now, this will be useful to you if you're very interested in filmmaking, like Marlene is. Marlene loves filmmaking. And, um, but this is interesting also because it makes you look at how stories are put together, the different elements. And it also makes you look really closely at how important dialogue is. Okay? So this is going to be quite a simple lesson. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read you a few words of text. I think it's about, I would say, no more than 400 words of text. Okay? You don't need a lot to make drama. Never going really to think about it. Okay? So I want you, like we did in the listening uh, exercise, to listen very carefully to the story so far. <coughs> His daughter stood and watched the big silver mirrors reflect the shining lantern at the top of the lighthouse. The rain crashed against the windows and the wee wind screamed like an animal in the night. God help those poor sailors to see this light, shouted William. It's as dark as death out there. No moon, no stars, nothing but wind, rain, and wild white water. Let us pray there are no ships near the rocks, shouted Grace. The storm would wreck any ship that comes near them tonight. That's true, lass, said William, but we can do nothing more now. Let's go down to supper. The father and daughter went slowly down the dark, narrow stairs to the kitchen. Grace's mother, Thomasin, was putting supper on the table. She was a white-haired woman of 65. Did you see anything, she asked. No, no, my love, nothing, William answered. Only the rain on the windows. Oh, thank God, she said. You couldn't help anyone tonight, William. If there's a ship shipwreck, you can do nothing. The boys aren't here. But mother, Grace said, father has to try and save people. It's his job. He can't leave them to die. Grace. No man could row a boat by himself in this wild sea, said Thomasin. So let us thank God that there are no poor ships near us on this terrible night. Yes, Grace, let's thank God for that, said William. And so the three people sat quietly round their table in the warm kitchen and put their hands together to pray. In the black night outside, the wind screamed and the big waves crashed against the rock. Again, and again, and again. Okay, right. So you've heard a very short bit of the story. What do you think is going to happen next? What is going to happen next? What's happening now? There is a storm. There's a storm. And the scene is set. Who are the people? Who is the man in this story? What is his job? He's called a lighthouse keeper. Do you know what a lighthouse is? You can tell me in a chat. It's a fire. It's a it's can you give me a definition in English of what a fire does? A tower. It's a tower and it has a a light, an excellent, and and why do we light it? the sea to warn people about the sea. And it's usually lit at times when they're very difficult. You know, when there's a rocky coastline, it's very, very important, okay, to light the lighthouse. Because it warns sailors yes. that there's danger. Right? Okay, so that's his job. The two other characters here, who are they? Grace. Grace, and she is the wife. Think again. She's upstairs with him. And they go downstairs and who has the grey hair and is aged about 65? Mother. The mother, and she's called Thomason. Grace is the, who is she? She's a daughter. She's the daughter of the man, okay? Mm -hmm. William Darling and his 
daughter stood and watched. So you have to listen really carefully, okay? Oral work is quite difficult because it's not like reading that you can go over the text again. You have to listen, you have to be sharp, okay? I know it's, you know, you've had, it's a long day, but it's, you have to be sharp, okay? Right, what I'm going to do now, this is a moment in the story which is a turning point, right? Mm -hmm. And something is going to happen next. What do we think is going to happen next? Um, they can see a ship. A ship. There's likely to be, what do we call it in English, when a ship hits the rocks, it's called a ship? Shipwreck. shipwreck. Yeah, a shipwreck. Shipwrecks are very common in England because it has a coast, but they're pretty common around Italy too because a lot of Italy has a yes. rocky coast. Quite, you know, just a year ago, there was a very famous shipwreck, wasn't there? Yes. Just off our coast. So, this is what they are, a shipwreck, but this is happening in very different conditions, okay? Now, there was a mention, I'll read it to you again, and see, Thomason says, thank God, she said, you couldn't help anyone tonight. Why can't she help anyone tonight? But his job, Grace says, his job is to go out and help people in the storm, but why can't he, this particular night, he can't help? Why can't he help? Yes, Phil. I'll read you the sentence. Thank God, she said, you couldn't help anyone tonight. If there's a shipwreck, you can do nothing. The boys aren't here. Who are the boys? Maybe his they're, son. He, they're probably his sons. And what do they do? They help him. They help him. Okay. So what's going to happen in this story? We can guess now. It's very easy. There's going to be a shipwreck. William is going to have to go out. And who is going to have to help him? Because he can't row the boat alone. Nobody. Nobody can help. Uh, who can help? Who is upstairs in the lighthouse with him? Grace. Grace. It is Grace who helps him. Okay? And you already begin to get a sense from this text that Grace is a girl of character because she says to his father, but mother, father has to try and save people. That's his job. And she's going to help him to do his job. Now, what, what I'm going to do now for you is I'm going to give you the original text. Here it is. But I'm also, the next time you do this, you do it on your own. But this time I've done it for you. What I've done is I've taken just the dialogue, just the words spoken, and I've laid them out as if it was a play, with just the words, okay? What I'd like you to do now is to think, first of all, I want you to do this activity where you think about William, you think about Grace, and you think about Thomason, and I want you to find a few adjectives to describe each person from hearing the text, from what we've talked about, okay? I'm going to give you 30 seconds to think of adjectives, and you can write them down if you want, or just tell them to me after 30 seconds. So you have 30 seconds starting now. Happy? Ready to start? Okay, can I have your attention, please? 
everybody. Okay, for William, give me one adjective that you've thought of for William. He's brave. He's brave, right? Because he couldn't be doing that job unless he was a brave man. But he would like to do it. It's, it's, it's the job he chose to do and he knows he has to do it. Excellent. Another adjective for William. Mm -hmm. You don't have another one immediately? Think a minute. Give me another adjective for William if you have a second one. Do you have a second one? Okay. Give me an adjective for Grace. Grace. Do you have one for Grace? What kind of girl is she? Does she just sit around and say, yes, Mama? No. What do we call that when you're, she's strong? She's intelligent. You are, yes, she's intelligent. I think that's very good. She's intelligent. Yep, very good. I think that's a very good adjective to describe her. She's intelligent because she understands what the circumstances are. And there's a problem. And she wants to see how it's going, what's going to happen. Okay. She also doesn't do exactly what her mother says, does she? So what do we call that if you are, if you don't, if you're not obedient? You are strong. I would put. I would say she is a strong-minded person. Strong-minded. It means she has a mind of her own, that she's willing to state her own opinions. Okay? What about Thomason? What sort of person is she? What did you think about her? A typical houseworker. Yes, she's, she's a very typical mother, isn't she? She is, what is she? She's anxious for her husband. Okay, so we would say she's anxious. And a typical mother. Right? That's good. Okay. There are two other characters that are not in this play. Who are they? The sons. The two sons, okay? The boy. Or at least two, mm -hmm. because they're girls. So we know they're two boys. And we don't know very much about them, except that they're probably what? They're, They're probably strong and they know the sea. Okay? So, William is brave <clears throat> and he's probably very knowledgeable too, I would say. He knows his job, he knows the sea. So, we might say he's knowledgeable. I think that's right. <laughs> okay. We. A D. I'm missing a D. I knew I was missing a D. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. It's really helpful. I find when I'm writing on the board, I can't visualize the word like I am when I'm writing it on paper, and I often make mistakes, so it's really helpful to be picked up. Thank you. Okay, so here we have a quick sketch of our characters. What ages do we have here, do you think, guessing? We know the mother's age exactly. How old is she? Uh, 65. Okay, she's 65. Brilliant. Grace is? A teenager, maybe. She could be a teenager. Uh, Normally. 25. I think she's older because if the mother, well, maybe she's the youngest child in the family. Let's say she is 18, 20. Okay. And the husband is probably the or same her. age as the wife, yeah. yeah? He can't be, well, it's unlikely he's much younger, is he? Okay. He can't be older. He could be, I don't think he could be too much older because he wouldn't be yeah. strong enough to do that yes. job, could he? Okay, right. so now we have already in our minds, we're beginning to have a little picture of these people. You have, I've given you in front of you, this text, right? Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is to think and just write in beside it how you think people are saying these words. Okay? So the way they're speaking. The way they're speaking. Okay? This is called stage directions.
stage directions are what the playwright writes so that the actors know what they're doing. Okay, we've given the actors an idea of what the characters are like, and I now want you very quickly to go through the text, very quickly, and think how these lines are being said. Okay, very quickly, I'm going to give you 30 seconds again. Because, uh, for example, when uh, William talks about the fact that uh, uh, she, uh, he can go uh, into the sea, um, he's a little bit anxious. Yes, very good. Excellent. Okay, I think time Sorry. is up now. What's the adjective for someone who resists easily? Sorry, it's someone who... Desists. Resists. No, uh... Stops, yeah. desists. Oh gosh, that's a very good word. Someone who gives up easily. Uh, it's someone who is, well, it depends why they do it. They're either somebody who wants to make peace, right? Yeah. So they're pacific. Uh, or they're someone who's shy, uh, who is unassuming, who is, you know, it depends on the situation. They're different words. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's stop for a minute now. Um, uh, I've been very generous with the time, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. uh, you've had way over your uh, 30 seconds. Okay, let's look again. So, um, God help the sailors to see this. Like, what, how did you feel that line should be said? Loudly. Loudly. Yeah. For two reasons. Why? Because he is worried. About He's the... very worried. Yeah. My God, they've got to see it. The words say that too. So he might even have hand gestures, mightn't he? So if you were directing this, you might get them to say, you know, okay. Then how is the second line said, do you think? Oh, let's go to the girls. How do you think Grace says this line? Uh, she's anxious and worried about yeah. the story. Yes. And she, she's also worried. Is her voice quiet? What? Quiet? She no, no. no. She too loud. is shouting over the storm. Okay. So that passage where they're up in the lighthouse, they're talking like mm -hmm. that, aren't they? What about when they go downstairs and they go and start talking with the mother? Okay. Uh, the first person to speak is the mother. How does she say that line? How would she say that line? That she is... Um, worried, but she knows that the boys are not here to Here, so nothing can happen, yeah. Yes. Okay. How, how would you make her, how would you, if you were acting her, what would you do with your hands? Mm -hmm. uh, like, uh, um, <laughs> not because... Uh, Show me with your hand, you know, you're worried. How would you act worried? Don't even say the words, just how do you look worried? All of you look worried. Oh, would you hang cards? Yes, very lovely. You look, of course, you look the up at God. Yes, exactly. Oh, thank God. And you put your hands together because that's the typical gesture of prayer. Okay? Remember that the theatre is not just about words. It's about action. It's about using your whole body to create that. Okay? Now, what I'd like you to do as the final activity here, I want you just to take a minute and say lines to each other, okay? As if you were two actors talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you should be William, <laughs> and you can be Grace. You have to decide. Okay, just do it between uh, 
Just think about it for a No, let's start right away because we really have very little time. You're willing and you're great. Off you go. And I'd like you to go uh, until you get to when they go down the stairs, okay? Right. Can you, can you sort of, I, I know you have to read the text, but look at each other if you can, okay? So from, yeah. from here to where you go down the stairs, okay? So. God, help the poor sailor to see the this land. It's dark and dead out there. No moon, no stars, nothing but wind and rain and wild, wild water. Oh, let us pray. There are no ships on the rock, and the storm would wreck any ship that comes near them tonight. That's true, lass. But we can do no more now. Let's go down to supper. Um, did you see anything? Oh, no, no. You mm. stopped there. That's where yeah. you go. Excellent. Excellent. I thought it was very good. I thought you were quite a good father there. I thought you were quite authoritative. And I loved your trembling hands and looking up at the sky. I thought that was excellent. Very, very good. Okay, girls. Now, um, we'll do it, the three of us. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I will be... Um, um, shall I be William? Okay, I'll be William. Okay, so... One of you is, is Thomason and the other is Grace. Okay. Uh, did you see anything? Sorry, I beg your pardon. Will you start again? I, yeah. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just joking. Don't worry. Did you see anything? No, my love. Nothing. Only the rain on the windows. Thank God. You couldn't help anyone tonight, William. If there is a shipwreck, you can do nothing. The boys aren't here. But mother, father has to try to save people. It's his job. He can lead them to die. Grace, no man could row a boat by himself in this wild sea. So let us thank God that there are no poor ships near us on this terrible night. Yes, Grace. Let's thank God for that. We're lost to pray. Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. I thought, again, you're all natural actors. I don't have to do anything. You, when you think that this is the first read-through you've done, um, do you see how talking about the character first and thinking a little bit about that, thinking about the age of the people, thinking about their relationships to each other, makes the reading of the text come almost naturally? Okay? So this is the first step towards becoming playwright. And what you can do with your novels, whatever you like, if you want to create theatre or create videos, as you all have done, is to extract the story from the text, but always try and pick a point which is really exciting. This is exciting. Something's going to happen next, and we want to know what it is. Okay, thank you very much, and next time we'll work on it a bit more. Okay? Thank you.